sure now. <laughs> um, I thought because we're going to have a lot of time in isolation by ourselves, it would be really a good idea to talk you through how to do a Bible study. Okay? So we sometimes call it quiet time, and there's good reason for that, but really it's just a, tra a chance for you and God to get to know each other a little bit better. So what do you need? Well, you need yourself. You need perhaps a pen and a notepad. I find that handy. A Bible doesn't have to be this heavy, but you can use your phone, but they can be quite distracting. So sometimes a good old-fashioned book is good because the book's not going to vibrate when you get a message from your friend. Okay, so we've got everything we need. Now, so we found ourselves a quiet place, free from distractions, and we need to look at how we hear God's word. So what we need to do, um, we were thinking that isolation might be the perfect example of how you can spend some time with Jesus because we're going to be trying not to socialise. And yes, there are distractions like television and video games. We thought it would be a really handy way to get to know Jesus a little bit better. So how do you do this? We need to get your mind in the right place. And that starts with something called confession. Yeah. Now, um, we know this is always a good idea. And we've told you before, haven't we, how sin can get in the way. Um, and it can kind of like obscure... Oh, Move like, sin, it's like sin can obscure your view. And how do we get rid of sin? Because it blocks our view of Jesus, our kind of relationship. Well, we confess it, we tell Jesus what we've done wrong, and he forgives us, and that kind of makes the relationship right again. Yeah? So if you're stuck for things that you might have, you know, this, you're unsure of things that might, um, that might be getting in the way of your relationship, well, it can be things like, Shouting at your parents because you're really frustrated because you're cooped up indoors. It could be like being greedy in the supermarket, stealing all the toilet roll. Mm. It could be being rude and snappy because you're stressed. Um, just tell Jesus what's been going on, give it to him, and he kind of clears the way. Now, the second thing we can really do to get ourselves in the right place to spend time with Jesus is being thankful, praising him. Nellie is my camera woman and she's going to show you an illustration she did forever ago that's mega faded. Ta-da! And it says, I don't know what it says. It says, praise God in the hallway and he'll open the door. Is that correct? Until God opens the next door for you, praise him in the hallway. Thank you, Nelly. Yeah, so praise opens doors. So we thank God for what he's doing. And you may think in these very bizarre situations, um, what is there to thank God for? Everything is changing. Everything feels blah. Well, I can tell you many things to thank God for. You can thank him that you are well, that you're not poorly. You can thank him that spring is here. Yay, and there's sunshine. You can thank him that um, people love you and care for you and are praying for you like us. So there's lots to thank God for, which is cool. So let's get started. We've kind of prepared ourselves. We've um, got our hearts in the right place and our eyes in and out on Jesus. So what we need is these things. Now, why a notebook, you may ask? Well, this is not essential, but I find it really helpful to write down the Bible verse, perhaps the date, and what stood out to me, because I can refer back to it and I can see things that God's been doing. So, where in the Bible? Well, literally, this is all good. And one of our most recent Bible memory verses, which I'm sure you all know by heart, was about how all scripture is inspired by God and useful to teach us. Remember? Yeah? So you can literally read any of it. Now the bit that I thought I'd look at today is John 14, verse 27. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give, so don't be troubled or afraid. In that one little verse, there are so many good things to hold on to. So many good things. And what I would do if I was doing my Bible study in my quiet place, away from the craziness of the world, then I would just read that through a couple of times. Just let the words sink in. And I'd ask God, I'd ask Jesus and the Holy Spirit to give me guidance and to perhaps talk to me personally and pull out something that he wanted to talk to me about. I'm leaving you with a gift. Peace of mind and heart. The peace I give is a gift the world cannot give, so don't be troubled or afraid. And then I'd write down like a word that really stood out to me. And what I'd say perhaps has stood out to me this time is that this kind of peace that Jesus is talking about is something the world cannot give. We cannot get this peace of mind from anywhere else apart from Jesus. And it's a peace that will look after our mind with all of crazy thoughts are and our heart, like our emotions. 
So I might write that down and just thank God that he's come to reveal more of himself to me. It really is as simple as that. And I would do that, if you can every day, brilliant, or as often as you can. And just, it will massively grow your relationship with Jesus. Your faith will become deeper. You'll get to know him more. And in the craziness of the world right now, there's nothing better than knowing the truth in the Bible and knowing that Jesus wants to give you a peace that will guard your heart and your mind. And then you can share it with us and other people and we can all encourage each other with what God's doing. So I hope that was a bit helpful. Um, and if you've got any ideas of verses that we could read together, just write it in the comments. Thank you. Bye-bye.